Hi guys, Sarah here. I wanted to just do a short video just to test out the lighting in my craft room with my new table setups and uh, see if everything works okay. <laughs> so I decided to play around in my art journal. Uh, I'm not sure, I think I've just been sharing this on Instagram, but Jonathan and I decided that we wanted to do some art journaling. So we went to our um, local thrift shop bookstore. Uh, there's Sorry, I can't remember what the name of it is, but uh, it's just a thrift shop with books and we picked out some old books that we liked the look of and um, that we could pull some pages out. So these books are sewn in pages. We went through, we did some out, glued some together um, to make some nice thick pages so that we could do whatever we wanted in them. So I'm starting off by coating the pages with some white gesso. Um, again, this is my play art journal, so I'm just doing whatever I want to do. <laughs> I'm not a professional. I basically just watch videos on YouTube and um, see what I can do. For this one, I just wanted to play because I wanted to see what the lighting was like and also um, just decided to use some things that I haven't used yet. So. Um, I do stop and go back because I do like to clean my brushes. Um, I also clean my stencils. I don't leave anything lying around. I'm kind of a, a neat freak that way because I don't like my supplies to be ruined. So um, I may have a ton of stuff lying around in my craft room, but my supplies are in great condition. So. I can't remember what I went to do. Oh, I forgot to put some paper um, in behind just so that um, I didn't soak up any gesso on any of the other pages or mess anything up because there are a couple pages before that that I had already worked on uh, quite a while ago. I do love this book though. It does have really nice thick paper and when you go over it with the gesso you can see the indentations from the print so you're not totally covering the print up it's still there and then whatever you whatever medium you use it's it it still shows those letters so it's very cool all right so i think this is about it for the gesso and then i go off to clean my brush and i'll be right back Okay, so I've pulled out some um, light nail filler. <laughs> so obviously I just finished my craft room and I purchased this brand new container from Walmart to fill the holes in my walls and decided to leave it in my craft room because it works awesome as a texture paste. So um, uh, the stencil that is there is a Gina Marie Designs. They don't have names. Um, I picked them up at Novi Mega Meat when I bought a whole bunch of stencils from her. So, and I'm just using one of my palettes there to pull the uh, basically drywall filler <laughs> through the stencil. It gives a really great texture though because it's really nice and light and airy. And you'll be able to see it later on. For this section, I did add in an odd light because um, I felt that the shadows were a bit harsh, but not sure if you can really see a difference between the first part. Let me know in the comments um, if you think it's okay. Again, I'm, I'm not a professional photographer either. I just do this for fun. I have a day job. <laughs> All right, so while I was doing this, I realized that the one side just looked really straight. So um, I did decide to scrape some of it off and I left that in there so that you guys could see because it was still wet I just scraped it down a bit because I didn't want it to be just a straight line right across I am leaving this all in real time for you guys so you can see it really didn't take me very long to do and it was something to focus on and you can see I pulled off some of the gesso. <laughs> Obviously I'm not waiting very long in between for everything to dry. And then you do blast it a little with the heat gun. Um, definitely don't 
use the heat gun too much on this because um, like some texture paste too, it will start to puff up and you can burn some of it. So you'll get little charred edges. If you like that, that's fine. But um, I do like sometimes when it puffs up a bit, that's pretty good. And I also just pulled along the edges, just I didn't want any little pieces of the wall filler sticking out. Again, just lightly drying it. I did leave it for a little bit um, in between filming to let that dry, but not too long. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is add in some color. So I have these glitter inks that I picked up at Hobby Lobby quite some time ago on clearance. I believe they were only like a dollar something each. Um, and I have not used them. They have just uh, been sitting in my craft room. So I decided to give them a try. And I wasn't sure, like I really didn't read the labels or anything, I wasn't sure if it's a watercolor, and it doesn't say that it's watercolor, but it says that you can add water to it and spray them, so that should indicate that it's watercolor. <laughs> so basically I just dropped some on, and it is super shiny, super sparkly. Even when I sprayed the water on, the sparkle and shine was still there. It's so beautiful, and I really love the way the nail filler texture paste picked it up. It was really good. So I just uh, used two different colors, that's it. I didn't uh, add any more into it. Because as you'll see when I add the second color, it was amazing. <laughs> I did also have my little handy helper Jonathan, he ran to fill up my water bottle for me because it was uh, getting a little low and getting hard to squeeze out, so he also grabbed me some paper towel. <laughs> oh, you can see I just did way too much there, but it is so pretty. So I just sprayed it with some water to help it move around and then tilted the book up and down to get it to go where I wanted it to. Also used the paper towel to soak up on the edges. And I did spray it a little while it was standing up too to get it to moving a little bit more. Very messy, but very fun. You can even see from there on the left hand side how you can see the text from the book pages coming through. It's so pretty. So basically I just kept adding some water to help move it around a little bit more and lighten up the colors and just soaking off the pooling on the edges because I didn't want that pooling to be there. And then I just dried it up again very lightly because you don't want to put too much heat on the texture paste 
and as it was pooling again I did soak that up on the edges feel like I should add some music in here, but <laughs> just wanted to get this up and share with you guys. Um, I have been working on some diamond painting. I am working from home right now, so I have my computer in my craft room. Um, so I don't totally want to spend a lot of time in here after work hours because basically then I'm spending my entire day in here uh, until things get a little bit back to normal. We'll see. <laughs> So I will try and share more with you guys as we go along, but uh, yeah, so that was it for the color. Um, I do add in some more interest with some stamping. So I'm using the VersaClair or VersaFine Claire ink in black and then this Kaiser Craft music note stamp. Um, just doing it loosely because I don't want um, it to be really bright and stand out too much. It does stand out a bit, but I think it looks good. You'll notice as I go along too, I realize that by doing that, I'm just making that straight edge. So I've started lifting the edge so that I'm not getting that straight line. I just add it in here and there. I didn't really want to add anything else after that. Um, to the background, so I just left it as is. But the cleaning person in me needed to clean her stamp. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I like my stamps clean. I cannot leave them. Um, and I didn't have my stamp scrubber there, so I just grabbed a baby wipe. And then I realized I did have the new Picket Fence um, stamp cleaner. The stamp scrubber. I just picked that up at scrapbook.com. So I just added some water to it and it kind of expands as it gets water in it. It's pretty cool. It's very soft and scrubby. Um, and I just rubbed it on there. It more than likely was already clean from the baby wipe, but just to get uh, those baby wipes that I have right now are a little soapy. So just to get some of that off. And then just laid that to the side. Now to finish it off, um, I just went through a bucket of pre-stamped and colored images that I have. So I have a lot of them because I do like to just sit and color stamped images. So I had one of the Tim Holtz Crazy Birds um, all colored up and one of the sentiments also. So I had pulled out my Mod Podge to put it down and I knew as I was doing this that it was a bad idea. So this is what not to do on your, your art journal pages when you've used watercolor or anything water-based. Um, the Mod Podge will move that around on your page. So I knew it was gonna happen, but it's just a modeled color in the background anyway. So I thought I would go ahead and give it a try and it actually didn't turn out too bad. Um, so I got the images glued down as much as I could and I did keep brushing over to keep the color from setting on top of it um, and then I did pour a little bit out because I didn't want to put that color back into my brand new bottle of Mod Podge so <laughs> um, you'll notice after I just start wiping it on the side on my craft mat to get the color off before I dip the brush back in the Mod Podge. So I start off with the actual stamped images first. And if anything, that actually just adds some color to the white background that was on that stamped image, um, which really makes it blend more into the pages. So you'll see after this part, I probably should have zoomed in so you guys could 
get a closer look at what I was actually doing to it. But uh, you don't want to do too many brush strokes if you are going to go ahead and do this because you will just keep moving everything around your color and you don't want to mess your background up too much. So I decided to just go for it. I got a large amount of Mod Podge on my brush each time and just did sweeping motions. And you'll see it does just blend the color a little bit more and then just brush it off to the side to get the color off. It doesn't affect the stamping because the stamping is permanent ink. So that was fine. But I do like the way that Mod Podge finishes off your art pages. Um, and I got the matte Mod Podge. So it does have a, still has a little bit of a shine to it, but it's not like super shiny like regular Mod Podge. Um, and it just, the texture that it adds to the page also just looks really nice. So it does look a little milky as you put it on, but um, you'll see in the end when I show the pictures, it really wasn't terrible. Now it did, doing this did brush off some of the sparkle from the glitter inks, uh, but there is a lot still in the light green areas. They retained a lot of the sparkle. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. Uh, you will see a close up and I just have some closing comments for you. Okay, so here is the finished layout. Um, you can, I can see the glitter, so I don't know if you can still see it. It's not as much like I would say in the dark turquoise color, you can't see the glitter, but like up here in the green, um, you can see it and down in here. Um, yeah, so, I don't know. <laughs> Again, it's just me playing around. Um, this is just my book to try things out in and see how things work and and play. That's the first time I used those um, colors, the glitter inks. So, yeah. Hope you enjoyed. Leave a comment, subscribe, and have a great day. Thanks. Bye.